164 hidden details that you might not have seen in the GTA 6 trailer. In this video, we're going to go through the entire trailer and point out the little details or talking points that I don't feel a lot of people have covered. Some of them have been covered in other videos and they are things that I've spoke about in some of my other videos, but I want this video to cover as many things as possible for those that may have not seen my other videos or may have not seen other GTA related videos. Before we get into today's video, I am 20 subscribers away from hitting 10,000, so if you could all smash that subscribe button, it's massively appreciated. In the next day or two, I'm going to start live streaming, so bear with me and keep an eye on my community tab on my page and I'll let you know when I'm going to be live streaming. So for the first shot, we can see here we're able to tow boats, similar to how we were able to do in GTA 5. We can also see that there's birds on the cables. Now this is something that we've not seen before from a Grand Theft Auto game. Also we can see that headlights are far more realistic and I can't wait to climb this thing. And of course we have prisons. Another thing to notice are the trails behind the aircrafts. They look way more realistic than we've ever seen before and of course that coincides with the volumetric clouds. The film style of the cutscenes, especially this one, is predominantly based on a 35mm film style. We can also see that they're taking advantage of some of the filmic effects such as highlights blooming using things like pro mist filters. It's a very clear nod that Rockstar have looked to Hollywood for this production style. And even in this low light scene we can see shadows on the floor from the birds. In this shot here we potentially have Lucia's family on the right hand side, however the jumpsuit looks like a guy so maybe this is someone else's family. The light shines through Lucia's ear showing that objects and characters have variable density. Then of course there's the hair physics which we'll talk a bit more about later in the video. And then we have little attention bits to detail like this window frame. The sealant is pulled out from the window and the paint isn't perfect. It's all extremely realistic. We can also see that they're utilizing global illumination. As we can see here there are shadows from the wires inside the pane of glass being reflected on the inside of the wall. And of course we can also see these amazing looking dust particles in the air. The only thing that I will say that isn't realistic is that the dust particles don't move through the air when Lucia's hair moves. That was probably an oversight. We can also see her skin texture and the peach hairs on her face. I'm pretty sure this is Rockstar just flexing her skill set here with textures. And of course we can see the texture itself of the prison suit. In this shot here there's not too much to note other than we can see Stephanie's name on the desk and this thing here looks like a chocolate bar. Not useful in any way shape or form but still cool to point out. Now this shot here, there's a lot to unpack. So we'll just start off with the first thing we see, which are turtles in the water. Then just up from that, we can see that this boat here has windows open in it. This may imply that boats maybe have adjustable parameters, like there may be a vehicle menu that we can use in cars that we can also potentially use in boats that allow us to open windows or maybe adjust some of the movable features of that vehicle. Then of course we have the sharks and dolphins here. And we also have realistic shadows on the water from the birds. Overall, this just shows a really advanced global illumination system. Birds also fly information as they do in real life and we can see the wave and water simulation is far more realistic than anything we've seen before. The next thing to point out is on the beach the NPC generation doesn't appear to be random. People congregate around seating areas and it's clear that they kind of stick to certain areas of the beach. This is way more akin to what we'd see in real life. And as we can see here seaplanes are a prominent aircraft in the game and they look to be making a return. Another thing to note here is that the draw distance is absolutely massive. This could be similar to how we see the game on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox but but it also could be just that they've turned off everything else in the map, which has allowed them to render in a further draw distance. We can also see here that the sand realistically coming off the back of the ATVs and there's towels being hung out to dry on the balconies. It'd be interesting to see if these towels are constantly there or this formation of towels, it changes over time. As we can see here, there's NPCs on the balcony suggesting that they must come and go and they aren't there forever. This implies that maybe these interiors are enterable or at least there's an animation built in for the characters to re-enter the buildings. Well, it's either that or they jump off the balconies. We can also see that buildings interiors are rendered in. This either means that they're using a parallax effect like we had in Spider-Man or they're actually utilizing real interiors. For example, we can see here and up into the apartments that every apartment has ceiling lights and the perspective Perspective of these lights changes as this camera shot moves. As we can see from this shot, animals are responsive to vehicles and animals are moving out the way of the bypassing vehicle, clearly being startled by it. We can also see the atmospheric density is huge, showing a huge advance in fog and particulate effects. And of course, airboats are back and airboats can have multiple occupants. If you didn't notice the alligators in the shot, you're probably going to get eaten alive when you play the game. Rockstar have really worked on these wildlife animations and they're way ahead of Red Dead Redemption 2, which was already pretty much the pin of wildlife animation. We can also see a mammoth sized gator in the back here and some deer. And there's also some butterflies or moths, wherever they are, around the grass. And there's something dark in the water over here, maybe a boar or something, I'm not too sure. Leave your comments down below what you think.
think that could be. Nearly every shot in the trailer has an aircraft in the sky or a boat. So this probably shows a huge prominence to how important these particular vehicles are in the game. Trailer scale is now more realistic. The trailers here look slightly bigger than they did in GTA 5. And of course we can notice that everyone's on social media. The NPCs all walk differently, which is a very welcomed addition to the game, the GTA 5 looking quite simplistic. Particular effects from the sunscreen are so realistic. People are also socializing and together in groups, not just individual NPCs by themselves. The umbrella positions are randomized, not all uniform like we've seen in previous Grand Theft Auto games. This just makes it far more realistic. The sand being kicked up by people walking and running is far more realistic. The footsteps in the sand are insanely detailed. The shadows are very similar to real life. The Sea Sparrow helicopter is back. The Volatus is also back. These NPCs throw a drink to each other. And this person here has a tattoo down the back and on the booty cheek. You can pause the video here if you want. You done? Cool. The waves here are far more realistic, the way that they interact with the boats, and also the water spray coming off the hull of the boats is also far more realistic. The characters in the boat are moving in time with the boat's natural motion. We sometimes saw this in GTA 5, but it was nowhere near as good as this. The ship in the background is being unloaded, leading us to believe that the dockyards are going to be more active and lively. And this boat here on the right hand side with the twin hull, I believe is a new model. As we can see from this shot here, there's orange peel in the paintwork, which is far more realistic to what we'd expect to see from a car in real life, especially if it's been resprayed. Lucia's clothes appear to move far more realistically, and I'll be doing a separate video on the clothing animations coming soon because there's a lot to unpack on that. Carbon fiber actually looks like carbon fiber for once in the game. In GTA 5, because there wasn't that much detail, unless you were really close up, it just looked like a light gray paint. And then of course we have this dude hanging out of the car filming a social media post, and this person in the passenger seat is most likely likely Jason as his head structure and his eyebrow structure and his facial structure from the top of his head look quite similar to what we see from Jason later in the trailer. I also want to point out that that was point number 69. <laughs> from this shot we can see that the wheels in the car have variable offset and camber. Realistic trash can also be seen on the floor for example underneath the front bumper of this car. Realistic tire marks that look gradually faded over time. They don't just look like they've been freshly made they look like they've been there for a while. People are leaning on their cars rather than awkwardly standing like NPCs showing a realistic attention to detail and the behavior of NPCs. Brake lights in daytime look way more realistic. Overhead cables look way more realistic and they're coiled in sections near the pole as we would see in real life. The boot slash trunk of this car is open. Potentially this means a new way we can interact with vehicles. And of course we also have parking meters in the game. Then there's this shot here, which is also very impressive due to the amount of NPCs in this interior. But then we also have the sheer amount of money on the floor. These sparkers look insanely realistic and Rockstar have nailed clean lens flares. Now in this shot here, the chain looks so real. Getting metallics to look properly metallic in games usually comes down to how effectively they can pull off shading and dynamic range. It's clear that Rockstar have developed a system to do this insanely well, so whichever developer or team of developers worked on that, well done. From this shot here, yes we've got everything going on in the middle, but I want to talk a little bit about what's going on around the shot. Considering that these cutscenes are probably predominantly from a story mode, having boats and big yachts in story mode is so cool. As we can see as well, there's a big variety of boats in this shot, not all the models are the same, which is something that I got very bored of in GTA 5. A lot of the same models of boats would spawn over and over and over again. Interior lights are also turned on inside some of the boats, meaning that we could potentially explore the interior of these boats. Rather than just being vessels that we command, we can actually probably do stuff within them. Even these smaller boats down here that may only have a bedroom, a kitchen, or a bathroom in them, maybe there's an option for us to actually explore these interiors. Over here, we potentially have the Vassetti Mansion. It's too far away to really tell. And it's also worth noting that from what we understand, GTA Vice City happened in a different universe to this GTA. So I think this is just an Easter egg. Tennis is returning to the game and floodlights look way more realistic. We also may see the return of toll booths like we had in GTA 4. Over here on the left, we can see boat ramps, which may indicate that we'll be able to lift and drop our boats into the water and further cements the idea that boating and marine life is probably a much more important part of the game than we originally thought. And as we can see over here, there's homes with boat moorings outside. So potentially you could buy a property and have a boat outside it. Now this is purely speculation, but it would be really cool if Rockstar were to implement that. And as we can see from this camera position here, cars spawn even really far away. And this kind of leads back into the take to interactive pattern that was filed for traffic movements. And I did a separate video about that, which you can see 
in the top right hand corner. In this shot we can see that there's an iguana and potential option to have pets as we also saw from the dog running on the beach earlier in the video. And as we can see from this car door opening, car interiors are way more detailed. Interiors look way more realistic as we can see in the top left. We can see that it appears a TV is on in someone's apartment. And as we can see from the lighting, lighting isn't just a source, they emit a realistic glow as we'd expect in real life. And over here we might have an easter egg which looks like Lance Vance. And then of course here we have patio heaters which also look insanely realistic. In this shot here there's not too much to point out but this person dancing right here, the movement of their hair is so realistic and cool. As we can see from this shot here there are container ships however it's only a small one so maybe we can't drive ones like this but maybe we can drive these smaller ones. This blimp is known as Fat Albert. It's used to monitor boat and air traffic to stop illegal trade. Potentially could play a part in some missions but we'll just have to wait and see. This here is definitely going to be a stunt jump and as you can see this jump has a little lip on the end clearly indicating it wants us to drive off it. Then as we can see from the water down here you can see through the water it looks insanely realistic. The water dynamics in this game I think are a very crucial part to the game. Looking how Rockstar have been employing specialists for this stuff it's clearly a very important thing to Rockstar to convey the water and marine life in GTA 6. In this shot here once again we can see that hair looks so realistic and the hair appears to work in accordance to realistic physics. This person sat in the water it looks like their leg movement in the water looks far more realistic the same way that your legs would have an element of buoyancy in water it's a really cool piece of attention to detail as we can see here that there's natural skin imperfections on lucia and her earrings behave in a far more realistic manner so we're about halfway through now and i quickly want to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor private internet access private internet access allows you to change your location to one of their 91 countries and 50 us states now if you're a gamer in the us having a localized state where you can ping your location to whilst gaming is really important because you're reducing that ping time. This not only allows faster internet speeds and complete privacy, but it also allows you to access geo-locked content and DLC. Some games developers will make DLC only available in certain countries, whether that's due to country restrictions. Some DLC on some games is geo-locked to certain locations. Now an extended benefit is also that one subscription works on all of your devices at home. You don't need additional subscriptions to make this work on your phone as well as your laptop or your computer. This can work on any of your devices, whether it's Android, Apple, Linux, it works on everything. So using my link down below, you can save yourself 83% off, which is only $2.03 a month. And you also get four months completely free. I use private internet access on every single one of my devices. Of course, I like to be anonymous, it's very obvious. And having that peace of mind that no one can grab my IP address by sending me dodgy links or anything, honestly makes me doing this so much easier. It's such a cool tool at such an affordable price. Click the link down below to go and check them out. And of course, it supports the channel when you do so. So as we can see from this shot here, sunburn is very realistic. And also the flag movement here is so believable. Getting flags and objects that are respondent to wind to behave like this in a game engine isn't the easiest of tasks. In this shot here, we can see that the stick bends realistically as if the weight and the force of the alligator is being applied properly. The amount of varied tree types and plants that we can see just in this garden alone is so cool. The ball here is moving so realistically in the water and you can see that the ripples coming off the ball in a circular pattern look really realistic. You can also see curtains inside the windows from here. Either this is utilizing the parallax effect or a generated interior, or this is indeed an explorable house. And the grass for the first time in the Grand Theft Auto game actually looks like grass. The smoke here looks really cool and it shows a lot of attention to detail on particular and volumetric effects. And also there's people down here watching from the balcony. This kind of goes back to what I said earlier in the video about people getting up to a balcony and coming off a balcony. Are they just gonna spawn and despawn or are they going to walk inside the building and come down the stairs and leave the the premises and does that mean that we can visit those same interiors all questions i'm sure will be answered next year the stuff on the shelves here isn't stacked 100 neatly it's way more realistic in previous grand theft auto games everything was very uniform in all of the stores that we could enter which wasn't very many stores so the fact that this has this element of realism such as these toilet rolls on the right hand side not being perfect is much appreciated attention to detail we can also see that the entrance to the shop here has a dirty floor which is very realistic when people are traipsing in and out of a shop and in the background we have this guy filling up his truck with fuel another really cool piece of attention to detail in this shot here we can see that the wood breaks away from the door oh and hello chop this guy here is leaving the petrol station or gas station as you americans call it why do you call a liquid gas it makes no sense anyway back to the video so this guy was potentially refueling his truck or his boat as we can see there's a boat which looks like a rib or a small fishing boat on the back of his truck also this truck is a jewelry just another cool bit of attention to detail next we have these puddles looking insanely realistic this definitely leads to the fact that rockstar is using ray tracing or the different versions of ray tracing to get these effects and of course we have the sanking xl returning to the game in this shot here the truck on the left hand side we can see water 
are realistically spraying off the tires. And this car interior looks quite realistic. The way that the door handles taped on with some duct tape shows a different variation to interiors that we haven't necessarily seen before. Another thing to point out is on a lot of the door handles in the cars that we see in the games, we can see the keyholes. Potentially this is something that we might need to pick to enter the vehicle and there's a spoiler coming in three seconds. So if you don't want to hear the spoiler, click off the video now. Three, two, one. Lock picking tools were seen in the leaks and also it's known that Lucia or another character, we're not too sure who it could be yet, could have a skill set that's focused around hacking. So the idea and concept that we may need to block pick cars or break into alarm systems on properties or vehicles is something that from the leaks people are starting to speculate about with some evidence to suggest that is the case. We also may have the potential to buy watches as a lot of the characters in this trailer were all wearing watches or wristbands. In this shot here we can see it's quite sunny out but it's also raining because Florida. The rain looks so realistic and it's really hard to see but it is there. In previous GTA games it's either been fully raining or not raining at all. Having it slightly spitting outside while still sunny shows that Rockstar are going to try and implement more diverse weather systems. And of course in this house here the interior is visible and we're able to see through to the back window of the house. Now whether this is a very advanced parallax effect we don't know or whether it's an explorable interior we don't know. I hope it's the latter. From this shot here, it's very clear that the off-roading and specialist vehicle events will play a big part of the automotive side of GTA. In the background, we can see this 4x4 platform. And in the bottom left here, a lot of people have said that these are kids. In my opinion, they don't look like kids. They just look like adults or maybe late teenagers that are stuck in the mud. But I'll leave you guys to draw your own conclusions and opinions on that. We can also see that there's a lot of trash on the floor, very realistic. And we also have mud sticking to clothing and bodies as well, which also is way more realistic than anything we saw even in Red Dead Redemption. Too. And some other things to note, there's toilets in the background, this monster truck is jumping through the air, really cool, and as this monster truck passes through the water it causes a bow wake pushing the water out of the way. Just another really realistic attention to detail piece from Rockstar. As we can see from this shot here, weeds grow in cracks in the concrete, and in this shot here the collision physics taking place are absolutely insane. If you watch this back over and over again in slow motion, the way that the table falls away from the bottles on top of it, and as the bottles go over and the fluid comes out of the bottles, it's just so realistic. And then that shot with everything on the floor, with all the light blooming off the puddles on the floor, it's done so beautifully. Whoever did that animation at Rockstar, if you ever do see this, I commend you. In this shot here, we can see that rear view mirrors work. We can also see the skin detail on Jason's hands is insane. In this shot here, we can see that Lucia is wearing a bra and a t-shirt. Potentially, this gives us options to choose underwear and overwear. In this shot here, someone's getting dragged from the back of the car and the water being spilled from these containers is insanely realistic. If this was in GTA 5, we'd see a splash and then it would all just disappear into the middle of nowhere. The debris on the roads is more in line with the nature of the car accident as we can see there's glass and bits of plastics all over the place. We can also see that the wheels are bent inwards. Maybe we're looking at similar vehicle physics to what we had in GTA 4, where the car deformation is a lot more realistic. We can also see here that the barrier is deformed from the impact of the crash something that we didn't see in GTA 5. In this shot here we can see that the banshee is returning and the potholes in the shot look far more realistic. We can also see the NPC behaviour, for example this person running across the road and the traffic moving around the events happening in the middle of the street is far more realistic than what we would have had in GTA 5. This shot here leads to the possible inclusion of a record store or record label or DJ or producer to some extent and also a lot of the vehicles that we've seen so far on the trailer have personalised plates. For example earlier we had the cheetah plate and in this shot here we've got the PMP plate. In this shot here we can see fishing supplies in the background, nets and rods in the store, suggesting we can potentially fish in the game. And over here we can see for the first time GTA games actually have realistic stuff that we can expect to see in convenience stores, such as lighters, cliche flavoured vodkas and other items alike. And in three seconds I'm going to give you another spoiler, so three, two, one. CCTV cameras play an important part in the game from what we can see from parts of the leaks. And in the leaks we saw some digital hacking equipment. So maybe these cameras are quite important to the storyline or maybe give us the option to hack into these devices or access CCTV feeds. The roof tiles in the shop aren't perfect, making it way more realistic. In GTA 5, every single interior just felt a little bit too sculpted. This store here could be a reference to the guy from GTA 4 that found the diamonds that wanted to go to Vice City to set up a gun store. But this could also be leading to the fact that we can steal items from other places such as stores and houses and sell the stolen goods. We can also see here that weeds are once again growing in the ground. It's very nice to see a combination of textures working together. So rather than just having just grass or just weeds or just concrete or just tarmac, we're seeing a hybrid of these materials added together to create more realistic textures. The tire smoke here is also extremely realistic and there's trash and leaves on the ground that move in accordance to the car's movement. 
as the car passes, they fly up in the air. We can also see here that Lucia grabs the door in the same way anyone would when the car is being spun around. So of course I did a full trailer breakdown in a previous video, but in this video I just wanted to cover off some of the stuff I missed and some of the little bits of attention to detail elements that Rockstar have included that maybe no one spoke about or maybe haven't all been put into one concise video. So thank you all so much for watching today's video. Please remember to like and subscribe. We're so close to 10K now and it's massively appreciated if you can drop a like or a comment. Also a massive thank you to my channel members, which we can see up here in the top right hand corner. Absolute legends. So thank you all for watching today's video and I'll see you all in the next one.